Playing the guitar, or playing any instrument for that matter, is at its core a very physical act. When I first started playing the 8-string guitar, I was reminded of this, as now I had a longer and wider neck to deal with when navigating to the notes I wanted to play. This caused me to start thinking about my practice a little bit differently. I began thinking in terms of motion and movements, rather than scales and licks and chords like I was before. This really helped me get over some barriers I was facing when getting comfortable with this new instrument. So in this video, we're going to look at horizontal motion. So that's moving up and down the guitar neck with your left hand. And I have three exercises that I worked on and I wanted to share with you. There's a free PDF down in the description below that has the three exercises we'll be covering. So make sure you download it before we get going so you can follow along. Before we begin, I'm just going to clarify one thing, and that is what is up and what is down. I'm going to be using those words a lot to describe motion on the guitar neck in this video. Up is toward the body of the guitar. Down is toward the headstock. Now, this may be counterintuitive because it looks like the headstock is higher than the body. Remember though, we're not talking about a physical space when we say up and down, we're talking about the sound of the notes. So as we move toward the body, the notes will get higher, and as we move toward the head, the sound, the notes will get lower. So just remember, we're thinking about sound. Up toward the body, down toward the head. Okay, so horizontal motion happens whenever we move our hands up or down the guitar neck. So we're just breaking apart that motion for a second, where does it come from? It comes from the shoulder, right back here, the rotator cuff. Right, when we twist our arm out and bring it in. Now, there's a bit of shoulder raising as well to keep it in line with the guitar neck. So it's a bit of a combination of rotation and raising from the shoulder. There's also a little bit of elbow movement just to keep on line with the guitar neck. So you can see here the elbow is a little bit more extended and then it contracts as we come down and closer to the body. But most of this movement comes from the shoulder. So why is this important? Why am I saying all this? You may start to feel pain or soreness or stiffness in your shoulder if you've been playing guitar for a long time. And that is an issue with how your posture and arm is being held and used as you're playing. So if you're feeling this, I recommend going to see a local physiotherapist, especially one who's worked with musicians before uh, to get that sorted out. But for now, we're just gonna try to do our best to maintain good posture while playing and to keep a very relaxed and heavy arm so that we're not overly tensing those muscles in our shoulder. Okay, so the first exercise is a very simple expanding pattern. We're gonna start with frets one, two, three, and four on the lowest four strings using one finger per string. So it'll look something like this. Okay, so we're gonna do it as slow as we have to in order to maintain kind of a loose, relaxed feeling in the arm and shoulder. If you have that, we can expand that to now two frets per string. So rather than going one, two, three, four, we're gonna go one, three, five, and seven, adding two every time. Okay, so the goal again is to maintain a very relaxed arm. Try not to tense up and stretch for these frets. We wanna allow the arm and shoulder to move as we move. almost be a gliding. Okay, you can continue this expansion uh, to test how far you're comfortable. So here I'm doing three frets apart, you can do four frets apart. Five, six, seven. I think after seven you kind of can't do it anymore, you run out of frets. Um, so find where your limit is and just do it slow and relaxed feel that motion of the arm moving horizontally and how it affects your playing. If you want a couple ways to make that one harder, linked in the PDF, but I find my favorite one is to just try closing your eyes to see if you can develop some muscle memory on the fret spacing of your guitar neck. Now, the second exercise you might already be familiar with, it is simply playing all iterations of a note on your guitar. People often do this when they're trying to learn the notes on their fretboard. So they might pick, let's say, F, and then they'll play it at the first fret, and then they'll go up, play it on the 13th fret, and they'll move to the next string, 6th fret, up here on the 18th fret, etc, etc, playing all the Fs they can find. We're going to use this a little bit differently. The exercise itself will be the same, trying to find and play every iteration of a note, 
but we're going to be focusing on that horizontal motion. Every time you jump to a new one of those Fs, for example, we have to jump 12 frets. That's a lot of horizontal motion. So just like in the last exercise, we're going to keep a relaxed elbow, relaxed wrist, and kind of try to glide across the neck without any tension in our shoulder. So it might look something like this. Okay, so notice how I'm not tensing at any point during that exercise. I'm simply trying to flow as smoothly as I can from one note to the next. Do it as slow as you have to. It's still a great way to learn your notes, so it might be challenging at first and you might take a little extra time just to find those notes, but even while going slowly, try to move with a bit of grace and let your shoulder be loose. I'm also not squeezing very hard, so that's something else you can think about. Try not to use your thumb to compensate in uh, holding up tension. So the final exercise is, again, something that people work on quite a bit, uh, but we're just going to tweak it to bring out that horizontal motion again. This is going to be scales in thirds. You often hear people working on this with their scales. It's a pattern in which we skip a note going up and then come back by one note. Skip a note up, back by one note. Okay. So that's the idea, but we're going to do it on one string. So this is going to force us into horizontal motion. And notice here, I'm just using one finger just to really get that flowing with my wrist, trying to lead a little bit with my elbow and wrist. You can use multiple fingers if you like, it'll just be a little bit different, a little bit more subtle. Don't forget to go backwards. any scale you're working on, um, on any string, it's a good idea to kind of change it up as you're working on it so you don't get bored and don't get too familiar with the things you're working on. So for instance, here's an A-flat melodic minor. Okay, and again, you can use one finger or multiple, it'll just change up the motion a little bit. And that's about it. So there's three exercises there you can work on with some variations to check out and focus on that horizontal motion while you're playing. These aren't necessarily exercises you have to work into your practice daily, but it's a good check-in to see if there are many or any little hiccups in what you're doing that might be preventing you from achieving uh, that really cool lick that you've been working on for months and months and months and just can't seem to get down. In the next video, we're gonna talk about vertical motion and then diagonal motion as well, which combines our vertical and horizontal movements. If you have any suggestions though for topics you'd like me to cover, any exercises you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments below. But for now, I hope you have a great rest of your day and keep practicing. <laughs>